Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Forty years ago in a newspaper interview, Clarence Darrow, the famous lawyer, said, Everybody is a potential murderer. I've never killed anyone, but I frequently get satisfaction reading the obituary notices. Have you ever felt that way? Most of us have. We dream the supreme revenge. An enemy is alive one minute, dead the next. That's in a dream. No one except a person with a criminally twisted mind ever commits murder. But Alex Hunter found a way. Quite ingeniously, he turned frustration and jealousy into an instrument of death and got away with it. What's wrong, Alex? Is it Phyllis again? Yes. She's all wrong. Oh, dear. Such a beautiful young woman. I thought you were devoted to her. I became infatuated with her. But that's not love. Look, I'm 55, she's 33. Proud of her beauty, tantalizing to other men, demanding and, I fear, unfaithful. Older man, beautiful younger woman, and a second marriage that for me is unbearable. I'm very sorry. And it's until death us do part. Alex! Does that shock you, gentle Abby? Then allow me to put it more bluntly. I wish that Phyllis were dead. Our mystery drama, Murder by Proxy, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Mandel Kramer. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The old aphorism insists that marriage is made in heaven. Can it be unmade on a jumbo jet flying from Los Angeles to Chicago? Mr. Alexander Hunter, 55, is a prominent investment banker. He lives in Evanston, Illinois. Two years ago, his first wife died. He married again, Phyllis Wilson, a divorcee. Phyllis is 33, physically beautiful and conscious of it, intelligent and opportunistic. Marriage to Alex Hunter assured her of wealth, affection, and a social position. Men desired her, but did not love her. A tragic young woman, a victim of her own beauty, pretending to an ego she did not have. Her doom was almost foreordained. High above the bank of clouds over Kansas, Alex Hunter has a strange encounter. Mind if I join you, Mr. Hunter? What? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Well, how do you know my name? Do I know you? Sure. You don't remember, that's all. Eh, it's nice, ain't it? Five miles up in the air and it looks like a bar and lounge in a Chicago hotel. (laughs) It knocks me out. It don't mean so much to you because you fly like this all the time, but it's a first for me. You're used to it. Yes, yes, that's true. The novelty has worn off. One gets used to most things. (laughs) Uh, Some you don't get used to, Mr. Hunter. Mm -hmm. Well, if you'll excuse me. A prison you don't get used to. 
prison? Yeah, the pen, the big house. I was in for 20 years, and I, I didn't get used to it. It's very interesting. But... You want to hear what it's like, Mr. Hunter? Not particularly. It does sound depressing. I'm happy that you're free. Now, you you'll be good at... You shouldn't be, Mr. Hunter. What do you mean by that? Why do you keep repeating Mr. Hunter this, Mr. Hunter that? I don't know who you are. Without meaning to be rude, I really would like to return to my seat. Well, there's lots of time for that. Uh, thanks for saying you're happy I'm free. You're a nice man. <laughs> I wish you wasn't. Just who are you and what are you driving at? Well, now, that's better. Tim Cohane's the name. Remember? Tim Cohane? Hmm. That name means something. Does it ring a bell? Yes. Tim Cohane. I was on a jury once and there was a Tim Cohane. Yes, now I remember. We tried you for murder. I was the jury foreman. You pleaded manslaughter. Murder without malice, express, or implied. Uh -huh. I recall the judge defining the charge for us. We sent you to prison for life. Joliet, right? Twenty years, Mr. Hunter. Paroled for good behavior. That's very commendable. But it doesn't bring back the jeweler you shot when he found you robbing his store. Nick done it. Well, before he died, the old man identified you as the man who shot him. It was Nick. So you kept insisting, but your fingerprints, Mr. Cohen. He shot the old man and dropped the gun. He was grabbing the jewelry. I picked up the gun. Yes. That's why. Yes. We never did get Nick, did we? An airtight alibi, as I recall. Yeah. Well... It seems you've paid your penalty to society, and I wish you well. Oh, you're really cool, Mr. Hunter. Twenty years in the can, remember? I rot in the pen for twenty years. My wife has to sell the bungalow. The kids run wild. She gets sick and can't get the kind of medical help she needs, and she dies. Oh. Who cares? You care she's dead and my kids are gone? Who knows where? No. It was just a day's work for you and the rest. The bum's guilty, sending to the pen. And when the bum comes out, what's he come out to? Nothing. Might as well be dead. And you wish me well. I'm sorry about your wife and children. I was 28 when you cut off my life. A jury sentenced you, Mr. Cahane. You cut off your own life. A jury found you guilty of murder, but settled for manslaughter and sent you to prison. Willfully or without malice express, you caused a death. And you've paid the penalty. You ain't paid, Mr. Hunter. Meaning what? I'm gonna kill you, Mr. Hunter. You are? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you amaze me, Tim. May I call you, Tim? We seem to have embarked on a very close relationship, haven't we? Oh, you are cool, Mr. Hunter. I didn't know if you'd yell for help. And if I had? I'd shoot you dead on the spot. Uh-huh. And what about you? Me, too. I've got nothing to live for. What's to prevent me from reporting your threat to the captain? I'm sticking close to you, Mr. Hunter. That's why I flew first class. When we land, what if I point you out to the police? I'll be gone, and they'll think you are nuts. Mm -hmm. well, you do have a point. Well, why don't you kill me now and get it over with? It's too easy. Twenty years, Mr. Hunter. That's a long time to sweat it out. Now you sweat it out. For how long? A day, a week, I don't know. In the city, in your house. You know where I live? Sure. Evanston. Some house and uh, Mrs. Hunter. <laughs> She's some dish. Yes. A beautiful woman. I'll miss her, Tim. I missed my wife and now she's dead. I have no choice, I suppose. You know, I am quite rich. No. No, no choice. You're dead, Mr. Hunter. I see. And you selected me because I was foreman of that jury, is that right? Yeah, yeah. If I get away with knocking you off, I'll get as many of the others as I can before some cop gets me. So my days are numbered. You've been following me, Tim? Yeah, yeah, the well I am back. I could have killed you any time the last five days. Why didn't you? I wanted to talk first. So you'd know what was going to happen and then... 
sweat it out. Your form of torture? Yeah. But it hasn't worked out that way. Maybe you're scared stiff, but I don't see it. You play it cool. I accept what's inevitable, Tim. You're determined to kill me. If a person's willing to die for murder, nothing can prevent him from committing it. That's right. Then let's have a drink together. A drink to the great adventure. Oh, Jimmy. Mrs. Hunter? You fool. <laughs> well, aren't you going to invite me in? Oh, I know you are madly in love with me. Oh, I am, am I? You forget that I am Mrs. Alexander Hunter, a respectable housewife. And you? You are, uh, well, what are you exactly? The public paramour? Uh, not true. I have eyes only for you. And you, and you, and you. You are a fake Jimmy Marquette. But you are a reasonably attractive flirt. A flirt? And... Me? Now, look at you. Standing there in a thin silk peignoir, luring even without makeup, a wicked look in your eyes. Oh, come on, Phyllis. Kid yourself, but don't try to kid me. <laughs> oh, I dare you to let me in. No, thank you. What if Alex walked in now and found you standing here ogling his wife? Oh, am I ever? Well, stop it. <laughs> I have to get dressed for your party. Or have you come to say it's off? No, 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 it's on. I, uh... I wanted to make sure you'd be there. Well, that's flattering, I suppose. Yes, we'll be there. Oh, you have to bring the old man? You invited us, not just me, no, us. No, yeah, no, yeah. No. Phyllis. Oh, now, Phyllis, you, you know how I feel about you. You are off limits, Jimmy. Alex is not exactly the permissive type. But how can you stand him? He just doesn't fit in with someone our age. He's not that old, and he's rich. And all this... The house, the cars, the land is all mine. Well, I'm not exactly poor, baby. I settled for Alex Hunter, and I won't unsettle for you. But, look, couldn't we uh, see each other alone sometime? You know, just thinking about you drives me wild. And when I think about you and him... Uh, uh, I... Bye-bye, Jimmy. Just bye-bye. Alex should be home soon. And we'll be at your party in an hour. Oh, sweet Phyllis. Make me immortal with a kiss. Oh, you have got it bad. Goodbye. Yeah, I'll kill myself. Not on my doorstep, if you please. Goodbye. <laughs> so, what do you think, Carl? You told this guy in the plane, this Mr. Hunter, you was going to knock him off? Yeah. Oh, Tim, come on. You lost your marbles. Uh-uh. Hunter was foreman of the jury that sent me up. I'm going to kill him and the rest of the lousy 12. Oh, boy, listen to him. You, you haven't got a chance in a million. Timmy, baby, you just got out of the pen. You want to go back? No, and I ain't going back. I'm killing Hunter. If I get killed, it don't matter. You mean it, don't you? Yeah, and you're going to help me. Oh, Tim, I don't know. I, I don't like it. You don't have to like it. You drive your car and we stake out his house. I take care of him and you get me away from there. Oh, just like that, huh? You think this guy is dumb or something? He's got cops crawling all over his place. Oh, no, not this guy. Not Mr. Hunter. He's kind of weird. He said if a guy wants to murder another guy and doesn't care if he gets hit, then the guy who's going to be murdered ain't got a chance. Now, listen to me. You knock him off, you'll be running until they get you. You don't make sense. Pick me up at 10, Carl. It's a 45-minute drive to Evanston from here. Okay, okay. Oh, but listen to... No, no, this is it. I want to get it over with. Twenty years in the pen, I begin to get even tonight. Phyllis, darling, I just got home from the coast. I've spent a rough couple of hours in the office, and I'm to go to a party? Why not? It'll do you good to relax with friends. Oh, come on. Friends, most of them are young enough to be my... What difference does that make? They're successful and they're interested. And they drink too much and they paw over you. Oh, you're jealous. Well, yes, I find it offensive. Ah, uh, don't be stuffy. Is it stuffy to be offended when a slob like Jim Marquette ogles you and paws you and you let him? And just what do you mean by that? Oh, please, Phil, let's not quarrel. I love you. I, I don't want to share you with... No one loves me. No one. No one ever has. Since I was 18, I knew what I did to men, and I knew what they wanted. But that wasn't love. And you are no different. You were in love with your first wife. And you want me to think that you're in love with me? Don't 
kid yourself, Alex. My blonde hair and my face and my long legs excite you. But you are not in love with me. I am. Are you, are you the... coming along with me to Jimmy's party? No, I'm not. I loathe that leering ladies man. And besides, I want to stay close to home. Phyllis, a man has threatened to kill me. What? And I expect that he will. I wanted to spend this night with you. Are you serious, Alex? A man is going to kill you? It's no joke. Now, won't you stay home with me? A man's going to kill you? Oh, don't be absurd. And don't scowl at me as if you'd like to kill me. Would you, my dear? Sometimes isn't that what you feel? Beautiful, flirtatious Phyllis. My wife with her bohemian friends. What if she were dead? End of jealousy? End of suffering? End of suspicion? Unfounded. You can say that with a straight face? You and Jimmy Marquette who... Believe what you want to, Alex. Send your imagined killer after me. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Alex? Sometimes you can almost read my thoughts, my dear. Jealousy is the greatest of all evils and the least pitied by those who cause it. That maxim was coined by La Rochefoucauld 300 years ago. Alex Hunter, indeed, is a jealous man. His doubts gnaw away at his insides. He's old, she's young, and tantalizing to others. He's married to her, but he doesn't possess her. Out there in the dark is a man determined to murder Alex Hunter. Is he afraid? Probably not. Death would be a relief. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Twenty years ago, Alex Hunter was foreman of a jury which sent Tim Cohane to prison for murder. During those two decades, Tim determined that when he was released, and he was, for good behavior, he would kill Hunter. An extraordinary vow. Impossible? Indeed not. Each of us at one time or another has said, I could kill you. We say it, but we seldom mean it literally. Phyllis, Alex Hunter's young and beautiful wife, has gone alone to Jimmy Marquette's party. It's now 8.30. Alex, I can't believe it's you speaking. You... You wish Phyllis dead? Hello, hello, what's this? <clears throat> Alex, uh, what nonsense have you been handing at me? Oh, I suppose it does sound like nonsense, Len. Well, of course it is. Wishing Phyllis dead. Oh, lovers quarrel. <laughs> Blow over by morning. Uh, tell us about your trip, Alex. He's serious, Len. Uh, nonsense. Which Phyllis dead? <sighs> Striking girl. You ought to be envied, old chap. Now, go home and make up. Huh? <laughs> you know, you're a tonic, Lim. <laughs> I'm glad I'm good for something. Alex, you frighten me. You are serious, aren't you? If it will rub that expression of worry off your face, Abby, I assure you that I was only thinking aloud. Feeling aloud is more like it. But there are times when, when I would give anything not to have married Phyllis. Not to have lost friends my own age, like, like both of you. Not to have lost nights of sleep, not to have as my constant companion the old green-eyed monster of jealousy. Uh, it's quite a statement, Alex. You mean the uh, marriage hasn't worked out, eh? In the last few months, it's fallen apart. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. I suppose it was to be expected. May and September marriages may work sometimes, but not for Phyllis and me. She's 22 years younger than I am, physically beautiful, but she's amoral. She really is. That's a very serious accusation, Alex. Abby, she's a hopeless flirt. Isn't that a dandy, old-fashioned word to apply to a woman? Are you sure you aren't being uh, snuffy, Alex? Is she at home? She went to Jim Marquette's party out on Lakeshore Drive. I was invited, but I wanted to stay home. We quarreled. She drove over alone, and I stayed home, fixed a sandwich, went for a stroll. Your lights were on. Of course, of course. I, I wish I could make a suggestion. <laughs> I haven't got one. No, of course not. Well, my troubles will be passed sooner than you expect. Divorce? No. Murder. What? I... Murder? Have you lost your mind? Alex, you, you couldn't. Oh, no, no, certainly not. I mean, my murder. What? Now, what are you talking about? Now, make sense, Alex. Twenty years ago, I was foreman of a jury which sent a man named Tim Cohane to prison for murder. 
He was released after 20 years, and he's determined to murder me and the rest of the jury, and he will. His life means nothing to him. Well, how do you know all this? We had an interesting chat on the plane from Los Angeles. Ah, totally mad. You and this convict chatted about, about, <laughs> about his plan to murder you. You didn't have him arrested? I couldn't report him. He'd have shot me then and there, and then himself. Well, did you report this to, to the police? No. When a man's willing to die to commit murder, the police are helpless. Well, they could have picked him up. And charged him with what? Threatening me? He'd deny it. And who would believe my fantastic story? You've done nothing. There's nothing for me to do. And I don't really care that much, Abby. My life is barren. I have memories, but I haven't added to them since I married Phyllis. Oh, it's the most outlandish story I've ever heard. I, I, just, I, I won't believe any of it. I do, Lynn. You think this convict is out here in Evans? I have no idea where he is. He spoke to me tonight when I left LaSalle Street. Just like that? Mm-hmm. He was very pleasant. Soon, Mr. Hunter, he said. It's a nightmare. Uh, Lem, call the police. No, 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 please, Abby. Look, it will happen. Nothing can stop it. It's my life, my problem. And I won't involve others in it. If he kills me and he's killed, I may have saved 11 other lives. Good night. Alex, don't go. Good night. Lem, Lem, the police. Yes, right away. the police, Len. Uh, it's right, right. I hope it's an officer I know. All right, evening, Mr. Small. Oh, Joe, I'm glad it's you. Uh, come in, come in. Abby, uh, Lieutenant O'Malley. Oh, of yeah. course. How are you, Joe? I saw Francie and that handsome boy of yours the other day in Fountain Square. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, he's uh, quite a boy, Mrs. Small. Yes, I, uh, I appreciate your coming around, Joe. Did, uh, did I sound crazy on the telephone? Well, kind of. You mean someone really is gunning for Mr. Hunter? Oh, yes, Absolutely. Ex-convict named Tim Co Cohane. Twenty years in the jug. He wants revenge on the jury, which sent him to Juliet. Oh. And he's going to kill them one by one. Oh, that's crazy. Yes, agreed. You sound crazy even talking about it, but Hunter left here oh, half an hour ago, and he doesn't think it's crazy. He expects to be shot. He's at home now. Mm. Oh, no, 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 maybe not. Maybe he's, maybe he's wandering around making himself a target. Anyway, I, I thought I'd better report it. Well, look, if Mr. Hunter knows a killer's after him, why would he be wandering around? Well, he's a little crazy, too, Joe. Lots of worries. Uh, this is a new one on me. Yes, me, too. He wasn't drinking. No, 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 no. Cold sober. Doesn't drink much at all. No, the ex con talked with him on the plane, said his number was up. So, Hunter is fatalistic about it. Expects to get it any time. Needs protection. Well, he'll get it. My partner and me in the prowl car will watch the house. And if we get a call, one of us will hang around Mr. Hunter's house. Thanks, Joe. He's my best friend. I don't... I don't want to see him hurt. Right. Good night. Good night, Joe. Oh, good night, Joe. Good night, Mrs. Small. Nice man, Joe O'Malley. Uh, Lem, I don't feel right about this. I mean... Shouldn't one of us be over there with Alex? Frankly, no. Let the police handle it. It's late. It's 11 o'clock. That was a long talk. Poor man. Yep. He finally sees Phyllis as his friends have always seen her. Vain, arrogant to tease, and rather common. Now, be fair, Lem. A beautiful woman often has to become hard. So many men desire that she's, she's forced to become distrustful. Her defense is to tantalize them, make them squirm, make fools of themselves, and then when she's emasculated them, says goodbye. I understand that. Yes, but Alex married her. He loves her. Why can't she relax and give him a, a decent marriage? Well, maybe because she can't. Her guard's been up so long, it's become a wall between her and trust. She really is a beautiful woman. Uh, the shell is beautiful, and not her mind and soul. He never should have married her. <laughs> Guess he thinks she's unfaithful to him. You mean with Jim Marquette? Mm. Uh, no, Lem. He's just the latest. She's leading through her hoops. A woman like Phyllis never succumbs. If she did, she'd be vulnerable. And she's not that. Hey, how long are we going to wait? We wait until Mr. Hunter comes home. 
He went out about 8.30. Well, you could have knocked him off then. I want to talk with him first. Look, I don't like hanging around like this, parked in some guy's driveway. What if he comes home? What's he going to think us parked in his driveway? We're turning around, that's all. Relax. Hey, hey, there's a prowl car, Tim. Yeah? Stopping at Hunter's house. One cop is going up to the front door. Come on, let's get out of here. Keep your shirt on, let's watch. <sighs> He's coming back. Sure, nobody's home. The door's locked. What about the wife? The car's gone. Hunter's car. She's out someplace. See? Cops getting back into the prowl car and... And they're leaving. Now, take it easy. Easy, easy. How long are we going to hang around? Hey, look. Another car's pulling to Hunter's driveway. There's a guy and a woman. Is that Hunter? Don't be stupid. You know, he walked out of the house at 30. It's some guy bringing his wife home. No way, dear Jimmy. On your way. Oh, let me come in, Phyllis. Don't be a fool. Alex would kill you. Alex? <laughs> he couldn't break a pane of glass. I'd like to have it out with him. I won't give you up. I'll get him out of your life. I don't want him out of my life. But you're out of it, Jimmy, my boy. Oh, come on. I mean it. You're 35, you act like 16. Oh, Good night. Phyllis. Good night, Jimmy. Oh, you dirty... You are not 16. You're younger. Use the car if you want to. Oh, I'd rather walk. Your privilege. See you around. Night. Hi, Mr. Hunter. What? Oh, hello, officer. Joe O'Malley. Yes, of course. Hey, it's almost midnight, Mr. Hunter. Oh, uh, yes, yes, it is. It's uh, 5 of 12. Uh, Mr. Small called. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, he said uh, some guy is gunning for you. I told Mr. Small not to worry the police. Oh, but that's our business, Mr. Hunter. I mean, no kidding. Has some ex-con threatened you? <sighs> He's going to kill me, Joe. Well, he can't get away with that, Mr. Hunter. You should have had us pick him up. No, he can get away with it. He doesn't care if you shoot him down. Oh. Well, can you describe him? We'll pick him up and just ship him out. He's clean. You couldn't charge him. Well, he said he was going to kill you. No, he'll deny that, and I can't prove it. I'll just have to work this out myself. You don't seem much worried, Mr. Hunter. And I don't much care what happens, Joe. Well, me and Mancuso will keep an eye on the house. Oh, just don't frighten my wife. She'll be coming home from a party. Oh, she already did. Some uh, guy dropped her off. Oh, I see. Well, thank you, Joe. Good night. Now, look, anyone prowls around here, we'll investigate. Good night. Hi, Mr. Hunter. No what? lights. Tim? Yeah. You heard the officer? Yeah. You, uh... You kind of disappoint me, Mr. Hunter. I didn't call the police. Friends of mine did. Oh. Well, that makes me feel better. A cool bird like you don't panic. Well, I haven't so far. For reasons of your own, you decided to kill me even if it cost you your own life. Under those circumstances, no one can prevent you from killing, so I accept that. That's why I'm cool. Right. That cop don't worry me. I killed you, maybe he gets me. That's okay. Like I said, I got nothing to live for. Then, uh, this is it? This is it. I see my wife fell asleep on the couch. Yeah, she came in half an hour ago and flopped down. She's a beautiful woman, Mr. Hunter. Yes, she is beautiful. You were in the house when she came home? That's right. Alone? I'm alone. Oh, oh you mean her? Yes, Mrs. Hunter. Oh, some guy left her at the door. She gave him a brush. Then she came in the living room and called your name, Alex. And she twirled around and flopped down. Fell asleep half an hour ago. She drunk? Nah, feeling good, that's all. I did get that Jimmy out of your life, Mr. Hunter. <laughs> what life? You said this is it, right? Uh, you're the first, Mr. Hunter. There's 12 of you. I'll get as many of you as I can. There won't be much noise. I'm sorry I've disappointed you, Tim. 
Like you, I don't care if I die. My only regret is leaving my beautiful wife. Now promise me that you won't harm her. She means more to me than life itself. Even if she wakes up and screams, promise me, Tim, that you won't hurt her. There's no finer woman on earth. You understand? You lost your own wife. A strange twist. Alex Hunter has wished his wife dead, but listened to him glorify her. He faces a man determined to kill him. That doesn't seem to worry him too much. He's worried about his wife. Don't harm her, if you please. The very woman he wished dead only hours ago. Alex Hunter has not spoken honestly to his intended assassin. Will malice be added to falsehood? I'll return soon with Act Three. Alex Hunter faces a gun in the hand of ex-convict Tim Crohane. The scene is the living room of Hunter's house in Evanston, Illinois. Mrs. Hunter is asleep on the couch. He dislikes his beautiful wife, and he suspects her of infidelity. Yes, he just told the ex-convict, please, not to harm his wife. She means more to me than life itself. Hardly true. A lie, in fact. To what purpose? It's midnight, and as she predicted, Abby Small can't go to bed. I won't sleep until I know that Alex got through the night safely. Uh, I think I'll walk over there, walk past his house, take a look, <clears throat> see if the police have an eye on it. You want some fresh air? Um, no, I'll, I'll stay home, Lamb. If anything happened, it... Well, it's too ghoulish for me. Uh, right, right. <laughs> Do you ever hear of such a situation? I still can't quite believe it. You know, I, I, uh, I remember something from college. Revenge is a wild kind of uh, justice and so on. So, oh, yes, yes, yes. Revenge of, uh, ah, revenge of wrong putteth the law out of office. <laughs> Francis Bacon, I think. How did that jump into your head? Yeah. This is Tim Cohen. He's out for revenge. He kills Hunter. And he does putteth the law out of office. <laughs> Some word putteth makes sense, though. Now, if Hunter's murdered, the law certainly is putteth out of office. It's flouted. That's funny. 1975. We think we're civilized and a maniac gets loose and takes the law into his own hands and kills. And there is nothing the law can do about it. The man's arrested. No, 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 not Cohane. Hunter told us Cohane is uh, ready to die like a cobra going after a man. He kills a man. He, he doesn't think of being killed himself. He doesn't care. He'll strike without any thought of the consequences. Doesn't mind dying if he gets his revenge. Eh, Hunter's right. There is no defense against an assassin who is ready to die. Oh, poor Alex. Mm, he's got a death wish. Death could wring that woman's throat. What a fool he was to marry her. Do you remember Laura? Now, don't, Lem. She's gone. Ah, she was a splendid woman. Alex and Laura. Hm. Ideal couple. Dead now three years. Uh, Yes, I often think of her. And now, Phyllis. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll walk over, Abby. I'll wait up. I'll boil some water for tea. Yes, good idea. I'll be home soon. Promise you won't harm my wife, Tim. Look at her. Phyllis means more to me than life. That's how I felt about my wife. She died while I was in the pen. I know, and I'm sorry for you. Took the wind out of me. Life became empty, and when I found out, I hit the cell bars until my hands bled. That's when I said I'd get out of there and make all of you suffer for sending me up. I understand. You don't let bygones be bygones when you're talking about a wife who died because you wasn't there to look after her. And that's why I'm going to kill you, Mr. Hunter. I know that, Tim. And I don't care, just so you don't hurt my wife. Huh? No, that's... That's not right. I do care. Mm -hmm. I think of all the years ahead with Phyllis. Wonderful years, and I do care. I'll miss those years, that future with her. If anything happened to her and I was alive, I... I don't know what I'd do. I couldn't face it. I really couldn't. I'd walk around in a daze. I'd end up in a sanitarium. Uh, uh, answer it, Mr. Hunter. And don't make a mistake. I'll kill her and then you. No, you, you wouldn't. Answer the door. Oh, hi, Mr. Hunter. 
Just checking out. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks, Joe. We were were just going to bed. Look, you can relax now. We picked up a guy parked in a driveway a few houses away. Mrs. Dietz noticed he was parked in the Moore's driveway and uh, called the station. He said he was just uh, turning around. Mancuso took him in for questioning. You know, maybe he's the guy who's gunning for you. Yeah. Well, thanks, Joe. Uh, Now you can sleep, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot. That's okay. I'll be hanging around. Good night. Good night. You, uh... You give me an idea, Mr. Hunter. I did? Yeah, yeah, you... You've been pretty cool all along until I said I'd kill her and you. Don't you harm my wife. Yeah, it's more like it. You're scared. On the plane, you was mighty cool in downtown on the South Street when I talked with you after you came out of your office. Cool. I couldn't figure you. You didn't seem to care that you was a dead man. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you don't care about anything except her. You just said if anything happened to her, you'd end up in the funny house. Tim. I want you to suffer, Miss Donna. Oh, it's easy to wipe you out, but I guess there's only one way to make you suffer. Her. Please, Tim. Please. Don't harm my wife. Twenty years in the pen, Mr. Hunter. I suffered until I was almost crazy. I want you to suffer, and I know how to make you suffer. Put down that gun. Alex. Hey, don't move, lady. Tim. Who is he? Tim. Tim, I don't care about me, but don't kill an innocent, defenseless woman. Kill? But he is going to kill me? Yes, yes, because then he'll suffer the way I've suffered. You're crazy. Now, listen, stay where you are. One move and you get it. What well, the this, this is crazy. Who is that lunatic? He's a man I sent to prison years ago. He's out for revenge. If I kill you, he'll suffer as long as he lives. A wife means more to a man than anything he owns. He said that about me? Yes, I said it and I meant it. Life without you? Come off it, Alex. You're as crazy as he is. Me? I mean more to you than anything else? More than your money and the house and your stuffy friends and your square behavior? There is no love lost between me and my husband. Whatever your name is. Oh, no, lady. It won't work. Tim, please lower that gun. You mean... Alex, you mean that he really intends to kill me, do you? Yeah. Why? Why? You murder me, you'll be doing him a favor. He hates me. He hates me because I'm alive and beautiful and he's not sure of me. He's jealous and it's eating him up. He doesn't want me. But he doesn't want anyone else to have me. Can't you understand that? He's got you brainwashed. I love my wife and I die for her. That is a lie. It's a lie. He loves only himself. He wishes me dead. Don't you understand? Good Lord, can't you feel that? No good. That's a nice try. The more you say what a rotten marriage you got, the more I admire you, the more I know how much he means to you. Tim, please, listen to reason. Murdering my wife or me or both of us, what happiness could that bring to you? If you kill us, you've signed your own death warrant. Tim, please don't do it. Let us live. Look, I'll help you, I promise. You've got a good life ahead of you yet, but once you pull that trigger, your life is ended too. I don't care. No! Tim, uh, uh, Oh, my God. So long, Mr. Hunter. Police! Police! Help! I got him! I got him, Mr. Hunter. Is this a guy? Yes. Yes, that's the man, Tim Cohen. A dirty murderer. I'm glad he didn't get you. I'm not, Joe. I'm not. He murdered my wife. Hey, Mr. Hunter, you, uh, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so, Joe. See, he went out the back way. I said stop, and he fired at me. That's when I opened up. Lucky I was on foot. Mancuso took the other guy to the station. I, uh, I'm awful sorry, Mr. Hunter. She was so beautiful, I, well, you'll excuse me? Yeah, sure, sure. Thank, thank you, Joe. Alex, Alex! Uh, he, he's here, Mr. Small. Is he all right? Yeah, yeah, he's all right. I I got the guy. Oh, thank the Lord. Alex. Alex, I heard the siren. He killed Phyllis. He, what? Phyllis? That siren oh. was the ambulance. They just took her away. Oh, no, I, I don't believe it. I, 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 I can't believe it, Alex. It's true, Len. Well, I, I don't understand. 
Why the devil would that maniac shoot Phyllis? He wanted to make me suffer. He thought the threat of robbing me of my life would terrify me. It didn't. I didn't have much to look forward to. I puzzled Tim Cohane. I was too cool about having a death sentence hanging over my head, and that bothered him. I see. When I walked into the house, he was here, hiding in the dark. Phyllis was asleep on the couch. But, but why, why shoot Phyllis? Because Tim thought that a wife is a man's most precious possession. Oh. Yes, I, I begin to see. Do you? I'm afraid I do, Alex. What? What did you say to him? When Lieutenant O'Malley came to the door, Tim told me that if I tipped O'Malley off, he'd shoot both Phyllis and me. I begged him not to. And when you got rid of O'Malley, you continued to beg. Is that right? Why should he kill an innocent person? Yes, why indeed. Even though the innocent person was a woman your jealousy had led you to loathe, you must be relieved, Alex. I am. You misled the poor fool into believing that your life without Phyllis would be barren, desolate, ended. That's what he concluded. Ordinarily, he'd have been right, wouldn't he? But after what you told me and Abby earlier tonight, do you realize what you have done? Yes. You've committed murder. Tim Cohane committed murder and paid the price for it. But you managed it. My life was at stake. And you didn't give a damn about hers. I must admit that that is so, Lem. It's horrible. And you're free. And that's more horrible still. Free indeed. Look at Alex. Don't you realize what you've done? Have you no sense of having arranged a murder? Don't you feel anything? I feel like having a drink. But you've caused a life to be cut off. Mine has been preserved. I'll leave the tears to Jim Marquette and her other conquests. I'm free of all that now. I am sorry for you, Alex. Don't be. I'll drink alone. And I'll toast Tim Cohane for giving me back my freedom and my sanity. Good night, Alex. There is no witness so terrible, no accuser so potent as the conscience that dwells in every man's breast. Alex Hunter made an unfortunate marriage. His young wife, Phyllis, was almost too beautiful to be true. She died, indirectly murdered by her husband's would-be assassin. What about his conscience? I'll be back in a moment. the sleepless nights when Hunter stares at the ceiling overhead and at the moving shadows swaying in the moonlight. I really murdered Phyllis. I murdered my wife. Tim Cohane's dead. She's dead. And I'm alone. He faces a lifetime of shadows on the ceiling, a lifetime of his conscience gnawing away at him. For a man of morals, that is true suffering. If I know anything about human nature... Tim Cohane got his revenge. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Leslie Woods, Grace Matthews, Leon Janney, William Redfield, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. This is your captain, Deacon Barnett. We will be traveling for the next few hours till we reach New York over water. We soon will be flying at 35,000 feet. Weather's clear. We should expect a smooth flight. Our ETA, estimated time of arrival at Kennedy Airport, 8 a.m. Angie, get that glorious rear end of yours up front on the double with the manifest. Only do it as gracefully as you know how and don't upset anyone. What's wrong, Scotty? What do you mean, green and Angie, paper? baby, don't ask questions. Just make like this is the army. Don't ask questions. Move. We are in mucho trouble. And don't forget that manifest. 
Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Bye.